Oh, I'm going to put it out to you guys. What do you reckon? We go for the mankini. Get John in his little mankini. Don't do it. His little Borat outfit. <laughs> My Borat outfit. <clears throat> You're making out as if I've got one. <laughs> I saw it in Vegas. Oh, you're giving away all my secrets now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't just give away all the secrets. Away, I'm <clears throat> still suffering from the remnants of the man cold. Oh no, Kai said uh, bright pink. Bright pink strip stripes. Better Sweet. still, Kai. We're going to get Sean. We'll do a little uh, thing. So whoever loses a game, we'll set four games up. The loser of all the four games has to do it in the pink mankini. Like, <laughs> I don't think that would go down well, right? No, I don't think it would go down well either, but... Right, so... <clears throat> John, what is on the menu tonight, my friend? Talk to me. Cool, Tell so me we, what we, goodness we're going to be talking about tonight. Well, we've got a uh, slight change of pace tonight. We haven't got loads and loads to go through, but we've got some interesting stuff. So we're going to review the new models. So there's... Uh, new model that was dropped today um, and over the last 24 hours there's been um, some other bits and pieces that have released through the community so we'll talk a little bit about that um, kind of get your opinions in the chat what you think we'll have a talk about it um, and, and kind of go from there uh, and then the main sort of focus of this evening we're going to talk about the grand finals of the GW GTs um, which is happening this weekend, which I will be attending and playing and representing, um, see if I can bring the uh, trophy home, um, and we'll talk, I have not publicly let people know what I'm bringing, so um, we'll talk through my list, or what potentially will be my list, I'm still kind of making last minute tweaks to it, because I'm still not 100% happy with it, but we'll talk about that more in depth, um, and then we're just going to kind of finish the show by talking a little bit about just generally what we do to prepare for tournaments so that might be handy for some people and again if you've got any kind of tips and tricks that you use to kind of prepare for tournaments then let us know in the chat as well um, and then after that we'll take any questions if there's uh, if there's anything going um, but as always just fire them in the chat we like it to be pretty interactive so uh, so yes yeah, so it's just me and Darren tonight Sean is currently editing a battle report so he is in the midst of doing that so he will not be here so it's just a the uh the two-man partnership tonight darren so we'll have to keep it going on our own i think we could manage i we'll think try. we can cope we'll but i suppose so before we get started like got, it does sound like he's got a good battle report he's working on right yeah well fingers crossed fingers crossed it sounds sounds positive yeah he's i think um he's gonna try and take on the the Nurgle, uh, the kind of the plague bearer horde, by the sounds of things. So that's a sneak peek, sneak peek for you. But it's, uh, yeah, it sounds like it should be fun. So we'll see, see how that turns out. And I look forward to, to watching that myself at the end of the week. But uh, yeah, all, all to all to look forward to. And um, so before we kind of get into that, you know, generally I'd like to catch up and find out what what we've been working on. So what what's kind of been on your uh, on your workbench at the moment, Darren? What you've been working on? 20 aberrants. 20 aberrants. 20 oh. aberrants. And I tell you what, it is absolutely viciously slowly eating me inside. Um, <laughs> especially because I don't know, because obviously we were talking the other day about um, customized chapters. And if yeah. I keep to the color scheme that I'm currently going at the moment, which is meant to be a, a customized chapter to myself, uh, which kind of looks a bit of it like uh, the Rusty Claw. Um, what I don't want to do is go to tournaments and people go, oh no, it's Rusty Claw, when actually it's not. And I want to use the forearm Dempra. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to miss out on that, that goodness. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry, what's that? Uh, Volume's a little, little bit low. Too apparently. low, okay, let me... We'll, we'll, we'll try and crank that up a little bit for you guys, but yeah. How about so that, Kai, is that better? So you think about changing the uh, colour scheme a little bit then? Yeah, it's, it, it goes back again to what colour scheme that I want. I decide I want to go with because um, I've always been a big fan of green and I've always been a big fan of, of um, red, two favourite colours, but trying desperately to break away from the norm. And that was the whole idea of the cult was to come away from 
my comfort zone go into a color that I'm not really used to painting and that being yeah. the red and that was cool and it is it's worked um, and I do like the color scheme that's very very the orange. nice the orange mean. yeah sorry the orange um, what did I say red that's because you're just so fix fixated on red yeah that's because I painted so much corn berserkers that's that's the problem so much corn been painted over the years it kind of got you get sucked into that everyone has their little favorite color scheme like yours is blue and green john yes yes um green sean, I, i'm the same i'm the same view i I'm, I'm a big fan of painting green i like painting bright a luminous green but yeah blue is the other color i do like yeah oh but that's the thing green for me green rocks you get a really nice luminous green and it to me it just screams across the table like yes i'm i'm good i'm hard but unfortunately green doesn't always win painting competitions no. it's more about the like when people like look upon models they they when they judge for painting um sometimes the primary colors do better so like the the, the reds um reds the blues. yellows they they seem to redo really, really really well uh, if you paint white models they don't tend to i'm not saying they don't win best painting competitions but you tend to find that the, the armies that do win the painting competitions tend to be the ones that are painted in red, yellows. So next time you go to uh, a tournament, um, just look upon the the models that win the tournaments, the competitions, and see you know you kind of engage and just see whether or not it's it is the yellows and the and the and the reds that's you know prominently coming on top and blues as well. Blues normally do pretty well as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Kind of went off on a bit, yeah. So at the moment, twenty abrams, John uh, sat on the table. We're getting there slowly. So the base cool. colours are done. So the tabletop standard, they're ready to be on camera. So if it was to go to Gibraltar tomorrow, they're there, ready to go to Gibraltar. If yeah. I decide, I'm going to take the Gene Steeler Colt. So I'm not saying I am taking the Gene Steeler Colt yet. It could be the Orcs or it could be the Wolves. Could have to be. wait and see. Could be. I mean, um, how do you find them new models? Their new models are quite sweet, aren't they? Oh, which one, the Aberrants? Yeah. Yeah. Because before they're... you were just you were working on the monopose ones before, weren't you? Now you've got the the kind of ones that are a bit more dynamic. They're a little bit more dynamic, but you're still kind of restricted on what poses you can have with them. Right. So I have customized two guys because the um, the sets I had only had two improvised weapons. Yeah. Now I'm rolling with four improvised weapons. Right, so you don't so do that kind of lets your creative imagination then start kicking in. You can start doing your own cool uh, interpretations of the improvised weapons. So I've really gone nice. to town on one of the models. He's got a whole light. Do you remember the old um, the box set that they used to do before for tra scenery? Yeah. Some street lights in there. Yeah. So my dude's got, got street whole, light. He's got the whole friggin' thing. He's the nice. baddest mother f going, man. <laughs> so he's going to get painted to a high tabletop standard. Like He's going to look like the dog's bollocks. So when he goes into the cabinets, he is going to stand out because he's going to have a friggin' light in his hand. <coughs> Not many models have friggin' lights in their hands. He's going to top the Primarchs. <laughs> he's going to be hard. It's going to look good. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um... So, um, I'm not going to give the game away too much because I will leave that in a second from kind of my list. But what I have been doing is I've been working on a upgrade to the shock attack gun. So, um, so we've got a shock attack gun that we've got in the Orcs army, um, which is actually that I found out through kind of buying the new one is that it's actually an, quite an old model. I mean, it's a metal model, but I thought it was still the current mm. current uh, sculpt. And it's actually yep. not, but um, let's kind of show you kind of what it is. It might, you might not be able to see it too too good, but, um, but this is the, the model we've currently been using. And it's a really cool model. I really, really like it. Nice heavy lead model. It's got loads of character. He's still got his big vacuum where he's like, you know, uh, sucking up the grot and... It's a cool, cool, cool model, and you know I took him out to to Vegas, and he, he did well for me, you know. Um, so I kind of I run him as my warlord, um, and he has the custom shock attack gun, which um, is incredibly good. So I kind of thought he it wasn't really doing him justice. 
so I've given him a bit of a upgrade so I've got the new model, the new shock attack gun, but I've also converted it. So I've added some extra gubbins to it to make it a bit bigger. Um, and then I've done a bit of effect on it. So I'll show you. Um, again, I'm not sure whether how much you're going to see it, but I'll kind of give you an idea. But it's got, um, I've used kind of a big old kind of fire effect at the front. I've extended the nozzle on it. Um, so it goes out quite a bit. Um, you know, he definitely. <laughs> you, now you're not modding for vantages, are you, John? Disadvantage, if anything, because this guy's not hiding from anyone. Um, mm. But you know, it, it just is a little bit more dynamic. Um, the model's slightly different anyway, so the it's it's not necessarily bigger, but it's um, so like the grot's got like, a bit more of a dynamic pose as he's being sucked up the vacuum. The the guy's got a bit of a different face. He's slightly less hunched over. Um, the shock attack gun's very very similar. Um, but it has like the lightning effects that come off it anyway. Um, and then I've just added the additional nozzle at the front and then the flame effect. Um, but really, really like him. Uh, I think he stands out a ton. And I think he kind of justifies the kind of the warlord bit, um, which is what I wanted. Um, I always want your warlord to kind of look the, look the real deal. So um, kind of went for that. But I'm really happy with him. I'm always putting a load of pictures up on Instagram. But my Instagram at the moment is... He's playing games with me, so uh, but but you'll you'll see you should see some pictures of him coming up on Instagram. Um, it's looking good. And then apart from him, I've been building lots of stuff. I actually need to kind of get painted, but we talked about that a little bit in the list kind of area of the uh, of the of the podcast. But I don't know. Uh, the stream's really quiet, so I don't know. Whether, is there anybody else? What uh, what have other people been getting up to? Um, be interesting to hear kind of what you're what, you, what you've been hobbying um, what's been going on so uh, so yeah so uh, but no all good all good still really I really enjoy painting the orcs I love painting orc skin uh, I finished off I finished off my three uh, pain boys they're not coming out in this list but I quite like the pain boys so I've got one with like a custom pirate hat just a standard one um, and then I also have the old sculpt as well. So we've now got two, uh, three pain boys as well to add in, which is quite cool. Um, and I've yeah. got another one as well that I would like to put on a bike. So if we want to run heavy bike list, we can run a heavy bike list as well. So um, uh, no, I've got loads and loads of the orcs. Options. Guess what I found? Go on. What I found, found a whole shoebox full of them. Really? They need to be painted. They're not painted, but I've got a whole shoebox just waiting for some love. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, I we've got so many now because I stockpiled. I I kind of was looking around on eBay and stuff like that. So um, I bought a lot of orcs before before we, before I went to Vegas um, and before they kind of really got the attention. So I've got loads and loads and loads of orcs to kind of paint up, which is which is really cool. Um, but they do take time. That's the only thing. They're very time consuming, um, and they're not they're not the quickest models to paint because because they've got a, there's quite a lot of detail, and they're they're not there's not really one color that's kind of that, that that overrides everything. So you think they've got skin, but actually the skin's not necessarily the biggest part of the model. Um, they've got quite a lot of clothing, and so they they're actually it's quite easy to paint mech. So it's easy to paint like big vehicles for orcs, but their characters and their like their general infantry is actually quite time consuming to paint to paint nicely. Um, but they I, I really I'm really really enjoying them. I, I think it's the painting the green that I love. I love painting the skin. It's just it's absolutely awesome. I've got like a real cool recipe for for painting the skin. Um, and that for anybody that's interested, so basically, um, I hit him with the Elysian green, um, and then after that, I wash him down with the um, uh, Beltan green uh, wash, um, and then go back over him with the Elysian green, highlight him up with an Ogrim camo. Um, and then you last hit them up with the highlights on an a shanty, on shanty bone um, and you get like a really lovely detail there um, you did, then you can use a lot of the kind of the washes to highlight all the kind of the toned areas um, 
but they're they're really nice to paint. Really, really enjoy them, and the the skin really, really pops with that recipe. I think it people tend to go a little bit too green, and actually, what you find yeah, sure. nice all colours tend to be more olive. No, I'm with you on that. But yeah, but anyway, so that's that's kind of what I've been up to. I've got a few people kind of chiming in now. Um, so Julie's been painting her Blood Brothers for a squad for Gene C the Cult, which is cool. Um, Dark Magos is coming. Hello. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've got a few people kind of chiming in. So please do, you know, you know jump in. Let us know how, what you what you're getting up to. Um, you know what you're doing, and uh, I'm really interested to hear your opinions on stuff. So definitely, we want this to be quite interactive. So please do jump in, and if you haven't already, please do follow the stream. Um, you know, follow us, like us, do all that goodness. Um, would be cool. Yes, definitely would be cool. Just realise I'm double on the screen at the moment. Don't do that. No one wants to see double, Darren. No, no one definitely wants to see the double. <clears throat> I've got bad enough <laughs> as it is. <laughs> so I'm looking on, see on the two screens, I'm looking on the Twitch screen, and I can just see the top part of myself on John's screen. I'm like, yeah, okay, that doesn't look too bad. And then I look over to the other side, and I can see the fatness, like that. Yeah, Papa Nurgles, we're hard at work here. Ah, uh, <laughs> one, one, one of me, uh, my trusty patrons, the legend, Marcus is in the chat. Hello, you uh, absolute boss. Good to see you. Welcome to the party. Yeah, I see what though. I need to like. Um, I, we've been talking in the chat, like for, for, with my patrons. We've been talking like lots of tyranny tactics, um, and I'm really getting the itch. I need to get rid of these orcs. I need to give them back to you, Darren, and uh, I need to get the tyrannids back on the table. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling. I need that twitch. <clears throat> Yes, Kai, uh, uh, Ace does have a Patreon service. I do, him, I do. If you ask him nicely, he actually gives actually special, uh, special services for that Patreon as well. <laughs> I ain't going to disclose on what those services are. You have to pay him and find out. Well, well, there we go. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, what we will be doing, and this is like, literally, there's only a few people in here, but it's, um, you know, what, what, what we will be doing is there will be a Patreon service for Twisted Dice as well, um, and anybody that is kind of um, on there will get access to, to my chat room as well. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in Tyranids and stuff like that, you get an opportunity to interact there. Um, and as I said, there's a... There's a, there's a small group in there, but there's like loads, like 24-7, Tyranny Tactics, uh, lots of list building, hobby stuff, so, um, and it's a really cool bunch of guys, so, um, but definitely there'll be, there'll be some Twisted Dice stuff coming up, um, we're, we're, we're working on it, it's in the background, it's in the making, so, uh, for all you Twisted Dice fans, uh, you know, for all you people that aren't necessarily Tyranny it, um, sort of fans as such and um, there's loads of other stuff coming up so um, and yeah yeah that we do like, I've, I've got he's my hype man Marcus is in there doing my hype you know he's in here yeah, we, we do do we do deals if you want dice as well you know <laughs> um, but again like loads of cool stuff coming up on Twisted Dice as well so I don't want to railroad uh, railroad into my own personal stuff but uh but yeah, if you're into kind of your tyranny tactics, um, hit me up and uh, definitely drop in, get involved. It's all good. No, that's it. Actually, talking about dice, if you haven't already seen, I'm going to share the love. Well, so share the love, that's exciting. Share the love before we go any further, because I think these look really cool. Um, now, so far, these dice are only only mainly for the club at the moment they are exclusive currently <clears throat> exclusively for the um, for the late and buzzard wargaming group um, or the late and but twisted dice late and buzzard wargaming group um, if I can find the Z pitchers um, these I think look friggin awesome <clears throat> but again beauty is in the eye of the holder right and Very then, true. And any second, we have got Z Dice. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
So that's the first lot of dice. And that is the second lot of dice. And then for the third lot. So these are the ones we're, we've been working on with the logo. Um, and that's been trickier than, than planned, right? Cause then, oh, man. It, it's, it's been so tricky. You wouldn't believe how tricky it's been. But uh, yeah, they are totally twisted. Yeah, it, ha it hasn't been straightforward. So when we've gone to we've gone to the um, the people that do the designs for the for the dice, they've just come back and said, "Nah, shut us down. Too much too much detail. We do it." But the main thing is, we've kind of got that. We've kind of got the new logo in there. That's the main thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love them. I absolutely love them. You've got you've got log sort stone on the screen now. Um, but yeah, I, I think they look really, really cool. Um, and we, I mean, I, I think we, we've already sold, I'm yet to see the funds, but I think we've already, already sold, I think the best part of about 200 already. Which is bonkers. Um, Just crazy stuff. We need to pop Absolutely something. crazy. So, and that brings me on to, so talking about new models. Yes. Now. Yeah, let's have a look at this beast. <coughs> Excuse me. Give it a second. Wait for the hamsters to start speeding up. Here we go. Have we got any specs on this guy yet? Um, yeah, there is. Like, let me try and see if I can, if I can dig the stuff up because they did put a little bit of detail on the community site. So let's try and dig that up. Because that'll be interesting to see what his specs are. Well, I will tell you. I will tell you. I'm going to give you the lowdown right now, Darren. Hot off the press. Yes, Marcus. This they, guy, they, they will be available with Ace very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah, so he is, yeah, the Lord of Descent. Discord. Oh, I can't, why can I not read? Discordant. He is the Lord of Discordant. Um, right, so he is, he's a new HQ choice, so he's, it's the main guy on top, so he combines the might of a Mauler fiend and the wisdom of a Warpsmith and the leadership of a Chaos Lord into, dead, into this deadly package. Uh, this is the Chaos turned up to 11, is what they say. So let's have a little look, see if they tell us anything about him. So... Well, it looking like he's got, obviously, um, the, more, the, the the beast that he's riding has obviously got some form of toxic weapons at the front with the spikes. Yeah. Uh, um, so, wouldn't that be cool? So what it says about him is he says, says he has special rules he's got. So he's got the Aura of Discord, which is subtract one to hit, one to from hit rolls for all attacks made by vehicle units while they are within six inches of an enemy models with this ability. In addition, add one to hit rolls made for any Legion Demon Engine uh, units while they are within six of any friendly Legion model with this ability. So that's pretty strong, actually, to be fair. So what that means is, for instance, Forge Fiends, which really struggle because they hit on fours, when they're yeah. sitting next to this guy, <coughs> they hit on threes, which suddenly makes them a fair bit better. Also, when he's if he goes stampeding in, then they get then he gives them a gives things around them a minus one, so that's quite cool as well. That's really so cool. I quite like that. So I'm interested in the guns on top. It's like okay, so what he's got is he got he's got two weapons. He's got auto cannon, which is forty eight inches, heavy two, strength seven, minus one, two damage. Yeah, and then he has a bale flamer. The bale flamer is eighteen inches. So it's a long range for a bale flamer. So eighteen inches, um, assault d six, strength six, minus two, two damage. Automatically hits a target. This the d six is a bit random. So if you work on the three. Strength 6, minus 2, 2 damage, it's okay, it's not amazing. 
No, but it also it automatically hits. It does automatically hit, but I don't so, think that's good enough. I yeah, but you know what, John, you're gonna have the auto cannons. It's gonna be no, the auto cannons are assault, aren't? No, they're heavy. They're heavy. <clears throat> heavy so in in theory, that's probably gonna be. But the flamer is gonna be the better option. I think you're right. The flamer, I think, is gonna be what everyone's gonna go with. I guarantee it. I think the interesting one's going to be what he's like in combat more than what he like at shooting. Because I think he's going to buff things, which is cool. But to me, he just looks like he's got like tentacles everywhere. He's got like the guy on top's got a massive, great big sword. Oh, um, hold on, hold on, and hold on. let's not get too excited. Well, we've just seen okay. we've just seen the rules for Shadow Spear. We, we have. <laughs> this is true. This is true, but let's, you know, All right. let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm slowly dying here. Um, but I do think that uh, <clears throat> just giving that plus one to hit is is pretty solid. I like that. Um, if he's Also, if he does have the ability of a Chaos Lord to um, reroll ones to hit, so if he's, if he's rerolled one to hit and he's... Um, plus one to hit as well, then that's actually super strong. That's going to be really good. But let, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to let, um, I'm going to wait until we see the proper rules come out first. And as soon as we see those proper rules, then I'll make my, I'll make my judgment on it. <clears throat> Cause he might have some funky Absolutely. rules. Like he, he allows you to reroll your summoning dice. <laughs> it's still sore subject, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm definitely going to do Demon King after this. But he, <clears throat> he looks, he looks, he looks cool, doesn't he? I mean, he looks an absolutely awesome model. So, if we've seen him come along, what are we going to see next? So we've got we've got Baden coming out. We've got the new Obliterators coming out. We've got him coming out. We've got the new Chaos Space Marines coming out. We've got the new Sorcerer. Um, has he been? Now, the question is. Now, like with the um, normally they hide things in plain sight, right? Yeah. This is going to make me want to go through the artwork and see if there's any potential spot sightings of this fella. And if so, is there anything else that we could potentially be missing? Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. I think there's. I think this is a pretty solid release, though. Like, so you know, fingers crossed. Like even if they don't get any love now, but they get it when the new Chaos Space Marine Codex look like goes live, then I think that's uh, it's good. And I mean, look, we're excited because we're very fortunate that we have one of the best, if not the best, Black Legion player um, on the channel um, in Tristan, and the War Master himself will be rubbing his hands together right now as he. Uh, Loads up all this Black Legion goodness. Um, so, you know, Fabius you know, what, is going to be loving that as well, right? Fabius will be enjoying it as well. So, but I think what what's exciting is it won't be long before you're going to see these models on the table on the channel, but also looking stunning. Um, so, you know, I think it's it's pretty exciting times. Might have to pull the corn demon kin out. Well, they're there, aren't they, Darren? They're sitting there somewhere, gathering dust. Yep, they just sat there gathering dust, waiting for their time to for their time to come back, and they're they're gonna come back. They will do once again, <clears throat> but we'll wait and see. Mm. So, um, so, so there's that. Uh, just having a little look at the comments because things are you know talking a little bit. So he gets plus one to hit to demon engines within the aura. Yep, yeah, which is what we said. Uh, very cool model. Um, I bet it's better than the Malaceptor, Harrispex, and Toxicrine. I think you're probably about right there. To be fair, um, our tyranny big bugs are pretty bad. Pretty bad, unfortunately. But you know, we'll get that love sooner or later. The big bugs will come back. There's a. It's only a matter of time. And they're so cool. They're the coolest models. So there you go. Anyway, I'm not going to debate that because it's fact. No, that's it. Um, <laughs> so let's start moving on to the tournament side of things. Yes. Before we touch it, I just like I know we're mainly 40k, but uh, just the other thing that, that got released in the last 24 hours was there's a new kind of um, uh, kill team for Age of Sigma, which looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, 
It's unlikely that we'll be able to cover it much at the moment because we struggle to cover enough 40k, let alone anything else. Fingers crossed, um, as the channel grows and we have more people involved, I'd very much like to bring you some Age of Sigmar battle reports and some more Age of Sigmar goodness because I do love that game. But uh, at the moment... Our hands are pretty tired, but uh, that looks cool. Some other, some more cool models. Um, Games Workshop absolutely knocking it out of the park at the moment. So uh, it's it's pretty exciting times to be in the hobby. Full stop. So uh, well, cool if you're into bit. Age of Sigma, go on. the Bloodletter is pretty cool though, isn't he? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, like so cool, like amazing. Um, and they can convert him up to forty k. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they they've leaked again. It's not. Uh, 40k related, but they've leaked the rules of the um, of Scarbrand in Age of Sigmar for the new battle tome, and he sounds to be like absolute boss mode. He's just going to take take some serious skulls. So, so yeah, it's uh, definitely. I'd like 40k to get the same love for for Corn, which maybe they will do. Maybe they will do in time. Maybe we'll get a Angron. That'd be lovely. I think Angron will probably come just as the uh, Crusade's coming to an end. The Black Crusade. Yeah, maybe, well, that'd be cool. We're both hoping for that. Both being massive World Eaters fans, so... Yeah, that's going to be cool, John. We, we've got something definitely well worth to look for. That's for sure. Uh, what's this? Yeah. Great shame. It's another Corn v. Corn box set. Is that true? Yes, it is, yeah. Oh, man... Well, it's not a bad thing, right? No, it's good. Don't it's good. Medals, like, don't if you don't like, yeah, if you don't like corn, it's a shame. But I like corn, so it's all good. That's fine, dude. I love corn. Nothing wrong with corn. We all love corn. Yeah, corn's cool. good. So yes, let's break in to talk about tournaments, right? That's it. So um, I'm not sure how many people we've got in the got in the stream, but um, for those of you that aren't aware. Um, Particularly if you're not necessarily in the UK, I'm not sure whether everyone is or not, but um, it is this weekend coming is the finals of the Games Workshop GT season. So there are four heats. Yeah, so four heats. Yeah. Um, I think it's right. Four? It's not three, is it four? I think it's four. It's four. Four, yeah. So four heats um, where basically there are 90 players in each heat. The top sort of 25, 30 players then qualify for the finals, um, and so of those four heats, the uh, now we're at the final stage um, and the finals this weekend. I qualified in heat three with the Orcs. Um, so did Tristan. Unfortunately, Tristan's not going to be able to make it. Work commitments. So I will be flying the Twisted Dice flag solo this weekend, which is a bit sad, but I'll do my best to represent. Um, so, so yeah, and I don't think there's anyone else, anyone else out there, but, um, but there's going to be some cool players playing, some great, great people involved, so that's going to be cool. Um, and yeah, so the, the challenge has been now, what do I do? What do I bring? Um, how do I maximise my opportunities to do well at the event? Do you know what my question uh, is going to be before you go any further? Hmm? Game one, Lawrence. I'll tell you what, if it is, I might just like, <clears throat> table flip and walk out. <laughs> no. Well, listen, you yeah. should know how his army works now. You should know what the priorities are to go for. Yeah, what I need is to get first turn against him. Like we both build, tend to build quite alpha armies. That's the problem when I play Lawrence. We tend to play armies that want to do the same thing. Um, so a lot, quite a lot of the time, it comes down to that first roll. Um, so we'll, we'll see. It, it wouldn't surprise me at all if I don't end up playing him across the weekend. Um, it's six games, which is quite crazy, which is interesting for, for Games Workshop. Um, so, so yeah, so it'd I be need interesting games works to make it happen now. Pardon? I need them to make it happen. Yeah, well, I uh, look, I've t I said it to Lawrence the last time we played. Um, I, I owe him a beating and it's coming. So, whether it's now or next time, it's coming. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, 
yeah, interesting. But um, but either way, it should be good. It's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of filth. Um, the Games Workshop format really favours filth because the missions, you know, they're quite a lot of the missions you can get away with just annihilating your opponent for, for a few turns and then play for the objectives afterwards. So they are... <clears throat> it's interesting because unlike any other major tournament, they play just a turn of war missions. So it will be... So we will play across the two days every single turn of war mission, all six of them, um, off, out of the new chapter approved. Um, so, so yeah... So pretty, Have you done much of the missions so far from the chat from the new from the new chapter approved? Adam? Have you done any missions out of the new chapter approved yet? Yeah, um so I played we played one, didn't we? Did we play one or did we not play one? No yeah we did, we did. Yeah, we played one in the last game, didn't we? So we played one with the Space Marines versus G C Occult. That was that was an Eternal War mission. Because that was the Intel one, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. And if you haven't already watched it Please do. It's a good game. <laughs> please comment down below as well because we really do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, big learning curve on the Gene Sealer cult. However, did record one Monday night. I ain't going to say what happened, but we can see the uh, the losing curve yeah. <laughs> in the <other> direction. <laughs> the, the, evolve, the evolving Gene Sealer cult. Um. But That's yes, so, so if you love Jesus, if you love the tyranny tactics, we're going to have the cult tactics as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, and I kind of feel like I'm living that journey with you, Darren. After getting rid of my cult, I'm kind of like I'm 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 <laughs> I'm airing for you to you know to to get to that kind of magic that magic bit with uh, GC cult because I think you've got it in you, and I think they've definitely got it in them. So uh, we'll see, see. Um, but yeah, so I played that. I've also played a couple of other missions as well. I played one against Tristan, and I've played another one as well. So um, yeah, they're interesting missions. I'm not going to say I absolutely love them, but they're uh, they're they're okay. They're okay. Um, they've definitely given me some much more of a headache trying to pick my list, um, and I'm still sure. like that's why. I'm happy to talk about my list, but it might change because I'm still unsure um, of a few things. But uh, but yes, so um, just looking at the constellation, I am missing oh. the orcs. Yeah, well, look, mate, you can have them back soon. The you, you know the, the studio has really really missed them. It's been like a, a really sad point that they haven't been there, um, and like. I've had certain people around in the studio, and yeah, I, I, I would like to see him back, please. <laughs> the thing is, so they 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 went at about so when when they left the studio, that the York Army was at about two thousand points. It's going to rejoin the studio at about six thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's grown. I love like, it. I love it's it. Grown <clears throat> quite significantly, um, but which is cool, which is great because what it means now is we've got like a great lot of options to be able to show you guys. Um, so you get get an opportunity to see so many so many different cool kind of builds, um, which is great. Awesome. Great, you're, great you're for the channel. Great for you guys. Um, so and loads more to come as well. So I haven't I haven't stopped painting with them. So there there's going to be more coming. But anyway, so. Um, I'll go through my list. So, and it keeps changing. I'm not gonna lie; it's it's, it's changed twice a day. So, um, good. Yeah. So, so the thing with orcs. So, to start off with to start off with the basics. So, basically, with with orcs, you've got you, you've got so many good stratagems. They have some of the best stratagems in the game. Um, but they're very expensive on stratagems, and you don't have very easy access to gaining stratagem to, to gaining CPs back. There's only wow. one way, and that means you building your army in a certain particular way, which I don't want to build it in that way. Um, and that's basically by taking um, one certain culture, which I believe is the gosh one of the ones I don't use. Um, so so yeah. Um, so, 
because of that, what you want to do generally is you want to take three battalions. You want to take three battalions because you want to maximise those CPs. So that's what I did in at the LVO, worked really well. So that's what I'm going to do again. It's slightly harder still because Games Workshop run 1750 rather than 2000. So, uh, so basically, so, so I've started off with, with more or less the same sort of um, setup. So I've gone for a big mech with a custom force field. Um, he's out of the index. Then I've taken a war boss on a war bike with a power claw. He's out of the index as well. This first uh, battalion is Evil Sons, which means that I can advance and I don't have any minuses for my assault weapons. But more importantly, it gives me plus one to assault and plus one to charge, which is really important with the Orcs. Um, I've then got two maximum units of 30 boys with slugger choppers and a knob with a big chopper. And then in this latest one, I've got another unit of um, Orc boys. This time I've got 24 Orc boys with shooters and yep. a knob with a big chopper. Um, the big problem that I'm having with the list is I really want three max units of Orcs because it kind of, they work so well. They're such the bread and butter. Um, but at 1750, that's quite a lot of your points gone, which stops you from playing with as many toys as you might want. But anyway, so at the moment I'm running on three relatively big units of Orcs that might be end up being two units, uh, might be three max units, we'll see. See, this this is the whole thing with Orcs though. I always I'm a strong believer in having making sure that's your you know, your your key fundamental yeah. bits on the army is to have the three big squads of Orc boys. Yeah. Because 90, 90 boys is is no joke to get rid of. You know, even 30 yeah. boys is very, very hard to shift. And if you don't shift them, then yeah. they're going to come back with a vengeance. And, you know, you kind of want someone to, like, waste all their shots trying to take, a, an, you know, a unit out. And at that point, you're kind of laughing because it's like, thank you very much. I don't have to waste my points now on Warphead, on um, the, the jump. Because yeah. like, these, these boys are going to come over here anyway now. And they're going to be nine inches away and they're going to cause you trouble. And then... These boys over here, they're going to do the jump, and now these boys are going to be in your face. So it's kind of like not going with the big units, not maxing them out, I think is kind of the wrong move. I think, me personally, I would try to make sure those units are to the max and maybe sacrifice something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if I'm going to be honest, at some point, I'm going to, when I um, find that shoebox back out, I'm going to paint up another 30 boys. Do you know what? I'm going to paint up another 30 shooter boys because for me, the sh the, sh the shooters are probably one of the best units in there like uh, yeah. for small arm fire. Just the fact that the amount of shots they've got and the exploding sixes is just, damn, that's really good because you can get in And plus, they're not bad in combat neither. They're only one yeah. attack missing off them, but they're so frigging good because if you don't get in with yeah. a charge, you just say, no worries, man. I'm just going to, what is it, 62 sh shots apiece? That's six yeah. shots coming your way, you know, and, yeah. five, and you know, and sixes are going to be exploding, and you guarantee you're going to get loads. Well, I normally get loads of sixes in there. That's mainly because I've got aces dice floating <laughs> in there. <clears throat> but the the sixes do go off, and it's like, damn, I I haven't lost a game with the orcs yet, and I'm not saying it's because I went with the bigger units. Um, yeah. I think I've been very very lucky with you know the people I've played, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. but they are friggin' good, and for me personally, I'd I'd just go, with, just try go with the bigger bigger orc squads because you just can't go wrong with them, you know. Yeah. Like you, you just you look at most armies now. I'm trying to think like the last three armies that I played, regards with shooting, could they have destroyed the whole thirty man squad? So yeah. last one I played, Elder. Um, no, I reckon I could have at least hid one or two of them behind. Spent two command points to keep them safe. So five command points in total to bring them back on the thing. And then I could have chucked them slingshot. Yeah, I I'm pretty confident that 30 boys is definitely, mm. definitely the way to go. It, do you know what, yeah. John? You, you, I know you've only got until the weekend to to decide it. Um, yeah. But then you're, you're, you know, you're dude with the big, that big filthy gun at the moment. 
he's going to be such a big distractor for wherever you, you yeah, play let's, against. Let's, let, let, let's just wait until we get to that part, Darren. You're getting carried away. We're only in the first I love Hawks. <laughs> I'm going to um, paint... Do you know what? Sorry, I'm just going to get some paint now. I'm just going to like yeah, 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 paint it all green and then get some yellow stripes the, down, like Adam the Ant. <laughs> the thing is, I counted up. So so I've got another... So caught on top of the Hawks that we've already got, I have got 120 more boys, Darren. <laughs> so uh, yeah, some of them well are already pre- some of them are already pretty much painted as well, mate, and including that's about thirty shooters in there as well. So okay, yeah. anyway, I take it back then. That, anyway, I, I digress slightly, but we've gone a bit all crazy. But anyway, um, so in the next battalion, this is my shooty battalion. I've got boss. two two weird boys. So this is evil. Uh, sorry, this is bad moons. So I've yep. got two weird boys. You have to take two weird boys minimum now because there are so many snipers in the game. So with the new assassins and with the genius dealer cult assassins, you're basically just like if you're taking just one, that guy's just going to die. Like he's just going to die. So you need to take some redundancy. So two weird boys is essential. I almost thought about trying to get another one in because the psychic powers are so important. But I'm going to go with just the two. Um, and then I've gone for three units of 10 Gretchen just because you need your Gretchen, you need them for yep. your Grot Shield, and you need them to fill your battalion up because you need the CPs. So then, and this is, we're getting to the exciting bit. So then I've got, got I've, I've been running just the, the Looter Bomb. So I've been running the 15 and I've been running a 7. That's what I ran for LVO. You sure. can go to the full 15-10, and we've got that. So we've got that in spades. In fact, we've actually got about 40 looters for some reason. I don't know why, but we've got lots of looters. Um, you got a bit crazy, the, on looters? Yeah, I've just gone a bit crazy full stop on orcs. Um, but uh, we've got 15 in this list, so I've got 15. The 15 means I've had to worry about mobbing up. It's just 15... They are bad moons. They can still shoot twice. They're still re-rolling ones. Um, they're just very effective at a 15-man unit. So then I've got on to the new exciting addition to the Orc Army that is still very much work in progress, and I'm going to be working quite solidly on it tomorrow, um, and that is mech guns. So um, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to take the camera off its little thing, and I'm going to show you what we've got. And this is brand new and exciting. So... Let's take that off and let's bring it over here. I do apologise for John's fat fingers coming on screen. So, hopefully you can see that, uh, which is a whole lot of pain, and that is 12. That's right, that is 12. I didn't think it was a Nintendo Switch, man. Yo, 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 yo. Well, it's actually, it's not mine. It's, uh... It's my uh, my little ends, but there it we go. It's quiet while you're painting. That's right. Well, I also play a lot of Mario Kart, but there we go. Um, Good man. <laughs> um, just wait until to see whether I can see me back in the camera again. I can't really see. Cause it's no, no, you're, you're back in. You're back in. So just before you go any further, so a couple of things in the chats. Um, so uh, what's your thoughts on the shift away? from the boys at the moment. Seems like Grotz instead of boys is performing better. Um, what do you think, uh, sorry, what do you do to think will charge, cha- sorry, what do you think will change in the new FAQ? Uh, question, do you stop the jump, or how do you stop the jump psychic power from the orcs? A good one. Yeah, well, um, I mean, as far as going away from from boys, like, it's a difficult one. The reason why people are doing it is because it's kind of become like the orc meta and the orc menace is a real thing. So people are really aware of it. Um, so because of that, people are building lists with hundreds and hundreds of shots um, that can just decimate an orc army. Um, so... You know, you're investing quite a lot of points on those orcs. So we talked about it a minute ago. Like, actually, if you don't prepare for it, then you're in a lot of trouble. If you do prepare for it, they only really have a T-shirt save, 
and you can shred through them really, really quickly if you have the right guns to do it. So all players are starting to come away from it a little bit to try and look at different things. Hence the reason why you're looking at 12 mech guns sitting over there, um, because you kind of... If they've got a way to deal with those boys really quickly and effectively, you suddenly lose a lot of the strength from your army really, really quickly. Um, so you need other ways to be able to prepare. I'm not sure going away from boys altogether or going away from heavily is your answer. Because I think, as Darren mentioned, it's I think it's the way that orcs still are going to be the strongest. Um, and I think you need to be able to find ways of of harnessing that by throwing in other threats rather than taking it away altogether because grots are just not scary. Grots will just die in in droves. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think I think you're, you're risking it if you go too far away from them. But, yeah, I have seen... I've, I've seen in recent weeks, I've seen people be successful with, with um, Gorgonauts, which we've got two of them, um, which, is, which is crazy, so we can use them. Um, I've seen people use mech guns. I've seen people go to more towards Storm Boys because you can deep strike them in for free um, and they're very, very quick. I've yeah. also seen a move towards bikers as well. Darren likes bikers. He's a big fan. Um, so, so yeah, there's some other options coming out from the York Codex. And the other thing is mega knobs. People are starting to, to build mecha knob, mega knobs. Um, I may or may not have put in an order for some mega knobs, Darren. <laughs> You know, we we have got loads in the studio already, all right? No, 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 no. We haven't got loads. I've counted them up. We've got some. <laughs> How many are we talking? We need at least 20, Darren. Oh, God. All right. I think we've got about 10. No, we've got about eight. I counted them. Okay. Well, unless, there, unless there's more in the studio, but in the box that's sitting here, I think there's eight. I'll have to double check. I'm sure we got. I got more. I got more hiding away somewhere. I'm sure of it. Convinced of it. There we go. There we go. No, fair enough. So going back but to anyway, the question about how do anyway. we stop? How do you stop the jump? That's the main thing. So the only thing, you, the only way you can really stop the jump is to deny the psychic spell. So if you got a way of dropping down the other person's, um, drop, you know, causing hassle on the. So, like Magnus, for instance, you know, given the the buffs to deny, um, yeah. Tyrion has got you know got the ability to take one that take one off. It's a, it's not an easy one to stop, really, is it? Unless you plan a good screen to stop. I think that's the way you want to look upon it. Is it's more of a screen yeah. setting up a way of so they can't get within nine inches yourself. As soon as you've got that screen in there, that's when it starts becoming really really hard to yeah. for the orc player then to deal with yourself all you need is one or two guys just up there just throw away units you know your pawns um just to soak up the the mass amount of orcs charging at yourself once you've once you've dealt with that and then you just open yeah. up to just hammer the crap out of them with as much firepower as you can um yeah. but don't take just your make sure off. you've got enough of that gap <laughs> so you people quite often make the common mistake of putting the screen too close to their stuff behind. So you want to yes. make sure that when they drop in within nine inches that they cannot double attack your stuff. So if they can nominate you because you're within 12, you're in trouble. Um, so you want to make sure that your screens screen them out far enough so they can't get within 12 of your stuff that you don't want them charging. That's really important. Um, Tyranids have a real good way of doing it because they can go Kronos and they can fire. They can fire spore mines, which then you can use to trigger the stratagem to make them do their psychic power on one dice. Um, that can really, really disrupt that um, Ooh, disrupt that power. I forgot about that one. Yeah, that's that's really good. It's really, really good. Really, really powerful. And again, if you're playing Gene Steel Cult and you want to try and disrupt the, the to jump, you can ally in some a small uh, detachment of uh, of Tyranids, take them as Kronos. Um, and then you can do that. So that works quite well. Um, or even better still, just take a small unit of uh, Gene Stealer Cult, you take the Sanctus Sniper, yeah. the Sniper Rifle, friggin' rocks. What's that? you got a little to jump down there, boy. Hmm. You did. Hmm, let me guess. I'm going to take an artifact. I'm going to be hitting you on twos. 
Then I'm going to be pretty much winning you on fours. Uh, sorry, on twos. Because, yes. because the gun's really cool. And, um, oh, what's that? I'm going to be causing mortal wounds on sixes, which I think then brings it down to fours, causes mortal wounds. Then, top it that off, as soon as you fail that, mortal, because he's causing the mortal wound, you're then also going to suffer perils of the warp. Beautiful thing about the perils of the warp that uh, our friend John discovered, uh, Preacher discovered the other day. As soon as you die from the perils of the warp, everything around him then starts taking bloody mortal wounds as well. So if the two the yeah. jump boys are close to each other, that's really good. Yeah, you're not going to do that. You're not going to put them close to each other. But yeah, it, basically that gene stealer cult guy, if he can see your, if he can see your weird boy, that weird boy's dead. Nine times out of ten, he's dead. So yeah, scary stuff. Um, we've got really, some. Really um, we've got John Z. John Z's in the chat. I don't know who that is, but um, hello. He's uh, building Helverins. Nice, nice. Welcome to the chat. Um, so anyway. We're going to go back to the list because we keep diverting away from it. But it is still kind of a work in progress, so that doesn't matter too much. But anyway, so at the moment, so I've got the potential of running 12 mech guns. Now, I, I've been, I think the best way to run them is a smasher, cut, smasher guns. They're, um, You're not going to go with the bubble best, guns then? The, with the what? The bubble, bubble guns. guns. Not the bubble guns. No, that's not <laughs> smart. <laughs> Don't go with the bubble guns. You should be um, the man that goes with the bubble guns. Exactly. I, I ran the bubble gun at... I know you went around with the bubble gun. I'm just saying, you should go with 12 bubble guns. You should be that guy that does 12 bubble guns All the bubble and then guns. Go, win the tournament and everyone really will be bubble. sat there like, ah, oh, okay. I didn't see that one happening. And then you're going to start the whole trend off where everyone's going to start buying bubble guns. Hashtag, hashtag bubble gun <laughs> John, the, um, bubble, the bubble gun man. The bubble chucker. That's yeah, it, he, uh, yeah. I mean, my bubble gun um, killed a swarm a lot of dice, in, the, in, in the heat. You're going to sell a lot of dice after after that weekend if you do it on that. If, if I do it with bubble guns. So I've gone for the smasher guns at the moment. So the smasher guns, if you don't know how they work, so they are so they're 31 points. <laughs> they're 31 points for a smasher gun. Um, so really, really cheap. So they're D3 shots. So you roll shots. Um, then they hit on fours because they're Gretchen, which is nice. They still have Daka Daka, so they don't. You can't use any stratagems on them. They don't get the clan cultures, but they still have Daka Daka, so they're still exploding on sixes, which is nice. So D three shots exploding on sixes. Then if they hit, they have a real funny mechanic. So basically, they wound on. You have to beat their toughness. So you roll two D six, and you've got to equal or beat their toughness on two D six. If you do that, you wound them, and then you it's minus four, and it's D6 damage. So they're quite powerful. 48-inch range, um, they're, they're able to do a lot of damage. Um, but uh, And, yeah, so I have 12 of them. Um, so in this current list, in, as I'm currently looking at it at the moment, I'm going to be running eight of them rather than 12. Because eight of them means that I can bring in the third big unit of boys. If I go for the full unit of 12, I need to drop... If I go for the two units of six, so 12 in all, I need to drop the boys down to just two full units, um, which worries me slightly. Um, I, yeah, don't, sure. I don't feel as comfortable mm. with just 60 boys. I'd rather have closer to 90. Um, so I've dropped it at the moment, and this keeps changing in my mind between going for full damage or the boys. Um, so at the moment, I'm going with a unit of six and a unit of two, and then 15 looters as my heavy hitters in that. Um, and that packs a hell of a punch, but it is extremely tempting to go full on 12, um, just because that's so much shooting. Um, it's crazy. And there's not much in the, um, the Games Workshop pack that's about... Um, that's about kill points because you deploy the mech guns as one big unit. So if you've got a unit of six, you deploy them as yep. six and then they become separate units once they're deployed, which is a big problem if you're playing kill points. But most of the missions, in fact, all of the missions are really not about kill points. There's one where kill points have a slight factor in it, but so minor, it's not a big game changer. So that's my second battalion. And then in my third 
uh, battalion. I've got a Death Skulls battalion. Uh, and this is where my warlord sits, which is Mr. Shock Attack Gun. So this is the Dread War um, detachment. And I have another big me mech with a custom force field. And then I have the big mech with a Shock Attack Gun. I'm making my warlord. So I give him the warlord tra trait um, opportunist, which means that he rerolls ones against vehicles. Uh, anything with a vehicle keyword, keyword. He still has the reroll a any of the other hits. And he has a uh, reroll to wound and a reroll to damage, which is nice. Um, then I have three units of Gretchen. And basically that means... So the only reason why that attachment's there basically is to give that give that um, that guy the Death Skulls uh, Warlord trait and to mean that he can reroll a, a wound and a damage roll because I think that's really effective. Yes. Um, so, and that comes to... 1749 so uh so yeah i think it's really really good i think it's really powerful um my and i'm, I'm happy with it i'm just very tempted to go full-on mech guns because i just think it would be really funny um but my my head says having that third unit of boys is going to be really useful the thing so is that's like, kind of where i am at my... i'd look upon i'd look upon the 30 the boys more than the than the mech guns yes they can hit but the mech guns can be targeted the, the, the thing is you can have so how many mech guns would you have in there if you had the 90 boys so so if i have the night well actually it's not quite 90 so what i've gone with is i've gone for a unit of 30 a unit of 30 and a unit of 25 with a knob which i'm happy with um because that's the that, that's the shooter unit um, yep. So with that, I have eight. So I have a unit of six and a unit of two. So that still gives me eight mech guns, which is I think, so, which I think is, is pretty so cool. Eight, eight mech guns with yeah. with the fifteen looters. Yeah. And Mister Mister Happy Shocked Man, Mister Happy Man, sat up in the building, just zapping yeah. away his heart's content across yeah. the board. I yeah. think that on its own is. Is such a Probably big because right? you've now got six things that you've got to to deal with, and six yeah. things that are not easy to deal with neither. Because you shoot the, the loot. The, my my, what you'll probably find first of all, people are going to shoot the looters first of all because of the fear factor of what the looters do. Yeah. <clears throat> then they're going to target at your at your zap guns. Yeah. Your mech guns. So your mech guns are going to go. They're not going to bother your your, your your warlord because they just not going to be able to get to him with everything else. By the time yeah. they've destroyed that, you've then got your boys on their doorstep just hammering the hell out of them. If you yeah. get turn one, and then chances are you're going to be smashing the hell out of them before they even get anywhere near you. Yeah. I just think if, if I don't do that and I go for just two units of boys, if like one of those boys just gets absolutely vaporised, then you suddenly you're on one unit of boys and then your Gretchen are killed and you lose the mobility. So because the th thing that with the mech guns is having those 12 mech guns, they move three inches. <coughs> if they move there, they're minus one to hit. They're not going out and grabbing objectives for you. So like, no. you know, you just have that risk if they blunt your kind of your, your hammer uh, with, with those boys then you're stuck with a lot of stuff that's just sitting at the back of the board shooting. Now, granted, at Warhammer World, line of sight blocking is pretty much non-existent, and that's why I've wanted to go for an army that was very, very shooty-based, um, because I think that in this format, it just favours just blow your up, your enemy off the table, um, which is why I've gone for this type of build. But yeah, sure. I still think uh, it would worry me particularly with so many armies that are ready to deal with, with orcs and with boys, if they've got enough firepower to just destroy those boys, I could find them in a position where I'm not able to take objectives because I'm just sitting at the back with all this artillery. When does the Shakespeare stuff start hitting this? Will Shakespeare be at the tournament? The new Shakespeare? Rules, the new Marines, yeah. With the new Space Marines scouts. Oh, you mean... Oh yeah, 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 Shadow Shadow Spear. Yes. So Shadow Spear is not available because it doesn't come out until the Saturday. Okay. So so no, so I haven't got to worry about all that deep striking 
like denial stuff, which is good. So potentially this is going to be your only chance. I'm not saying it's not going to be at the moment the way the meta is. Have you? I'm guessing you've had a. You know you fit. You you know your maths on. What's the likelihood of those uh, mech guns doing the doing the business? Yeah, yeah. So statistically, they do very very well um, because they. Unless I'm they, rolling the dice. Pardon? Unless I'm rolling the dice. Unless you're rolling the dice, and then we're in all sort all kinds of trouble. But uh, <laughs> but generally, they do very well. They also um, they're one of the best anti-air weapons that the orcs have as well. They're they're unless you're against minus two, so if you're playing Alatoc flyers, which there's not many people running, most of them are playing Yunari flyers, which are only minus one, and they can use the stratagem to make a minus two, but that's only one flyer. Um, yeah. But unless you're doing minus two across the board, which there's not many people that are doing it, minus one with those guns, they're actually on paper statistically better than the tractor cannons. Um, so, so, yeah. They just the other thing that they give you is their their slightly better answer to knights as well. So against knights, they're really good because they're that minus four kicks in. Looters are really terrible against knights on the whole. They're not bad. They chip away. They can do the damage, but it takes them a little bit too long. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, but those those mech guns will. On, on kind of average dice deal with knights really well because they're minus four because they're d6 damage because on you know they're they you only need double four double four gives you minus a, a four weight in are going to be the the end of because they're going to have a five up in bun spend a command point put it to a four up in bun so that's only on one though and then you shoot the rest at something else mm. Yeah, true, true that. You can only do it on the one, granted. So you, um, so you shoot the first mech gun at the one to make him rotate iron shields, and then you shoot the others at the other one, or another one of the others. Yeah. Yeah. So they, so a five up is not a reliable save. When you've got, when you've got that amount of mech gun shooting at him, that's not a reliable save. I think at the end of the day, I think you're going to have to... Uh, maybe you should just roll a dice, John. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I'm going to keep. I'm an iron about it until probably really close on, um, you know. And I still like. I, I'm really tempted to take the, uh, to take the old um, Gorkonal and deep strike him in because I think he's actually really really good. The old Gorkonal, love him. But because um, actually, he gets when he deep strikes in, he's a three d six charge. Um, he hits like a knight, but harder. He's got a load of shooting as well. You can put him in the Dreadwire formation, which means he can shoot his Gatling gun twice. Um, he's actually really, really good. Um, and I love the model, and I love playing with big stuff. But uh, Remind me, does he get he, the clan cultures? Or is he... Um, yep. yep. Oh, yes. Yes, he's really yes, yes. He's really good, and he's actually cheap as well. He's like super, super solid. It's yeah. just really. Excuse me, people. <coughs> I do there apologize. are just there are just so many good options in the York um, in the York Codex. I said I've been working on uh, some custom um, tank busters as well. So with like the the missiles. So I've got converted the. Um, the big shooters on a few of these guys, so they've all so they've got tank buster missiles. Um, so I've got got a unit of them that's work in progress as well. Um, and you can stick you can stick them in the Gorkonal. Gorkonal drops down. The tank busters jump out. The tank busters they um, they re-roll to hit. It's just crazy. I'm liking this. I'm liking the sound of this already. It sounds good. There's so much, mate. There is so, like, literally, we're only just skimming the surface of that codex. Um, there's, there's so much good stuff in there. But, uh, but yeah, but that's, that's, that's for another day. But, um, but, yeah, but, yeah. And, plus, as I said, I need to give them back to you, mate, because I want to concentrate back on the Tyranids again. But, uh, but yeah. They're, I'm going to uh, need to find my next victim, and he's going to enjoy the love against the Orcs. Against the Orcs, yeah. Well, you know. 6,000 
there's 4,000 new points I've got to play with, that's even better. You've got all sorts of toys, mate. So many toys. So many Paul toys. Paul's going to be so happy. <laughs> Literally, like, uh, there's so much extra stuff that, w that I've added to it. Like, even, like, Gretchen's. Like, there was 20 Gretchen's when, when, when you added them over. <laughs> no, there's 30 oh, Gretchen's. There's like 30 Gretchen in there. There's 30 Gretchen's. There's 30 Gretchen's when you handed it over. Now there's 70 Gretchen's. Mate, I'd... <laughs> It must be the right time of the year. It, you know, what was it? The right moons come out and all the uh, orc spores are starting to appear and they're all coming out of the ground and they're all there. All right, boss, let's get these bloody things. The wire's right here, boss. Yeah, we're going to get you, your ma. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, mate. Love it. Can't wait to get these frigging orcs back on the channel. Get back yeah. into it. And better yeah, still, yeah. I'm going to get the preacher back down. I'm going to get him to bring his um, Smash Bros in there. And I'm going to show <laughs> the Smash Bros exactly what the Orcs do. I'm going to say, who are you smashing now, son? Oh. Who are you smashing? <laughs> oh. He's going to love the it. The Smash Brothers really, really do not like looters. Like, when I play them in Vegas. <laughs> Matt, I know what they can do. It'll be, right, uh, mm, who should I pick on first? Let's go for Morty. Hey, Morty. I've got some looters. Yeah. Oh. Fired once, taking you probably down half your wounds. Let's fire again. Let's finish you off. Oh, Magnus, let's have a little. Let's have a good little pop at you while while we're here. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm liking the look. I'm liking the sound of this. This sounds friggin' awesome. Yeah, yeah. They're just fun as well. I think <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, I do apologise. The orcs the accents, orcs. not great. Yeah, <clears throat> the, the thing with orcs as well is that they are super fun. Like they are like really really stupidly entertaining to play so as much as they're like they're crazy powerful do you know what i want to do john i, I need yeah. to take him to Gibraltar actually and i need to do the whole friggin wah <laughs> 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 just so i start charging the orcs at the at my opponent just look him in the eyes just that little drop the air uh, drop the old um glasses down just tilt uh, them down and <laughs> you got a great you got a great comment in the chat Marcus is saying best orc accent. I don't know if I'm being trolled there or not. <laughs> no, that, like we had a comment in the um, in in one of the battle reports. I think because so I played orcs against Tristan, and obviously you weren't around. And I think people were disappointed that the orc accent had gone. And then when I played you with the orcs against the knights. You chipped in with some of your voices then, and I think someone in the comment was like, "Yeah, the, 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 the accent." <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. <clears throat> I can't help it with the orcs. Yeah, they're fun. They're really fun. It's um, the inner yeah, child starts breaking out. Well, that's but that's the thing about orcs. That's what's so cool about them. They are really just fun to play. They're really stupid, so it's great. They're just crazy. They're just crazy. Um, Anyway, so so I suppose so that's what I'm bringing. Um, still going to be tweaked a little bit, but that's basically what I'm bringing. Um, should be a lot of fun. Um, and I mean, the show's been going quite a long time, but I think what we wanted to do before we kind of wrap things up, we just wanted to talk a bit about like general kind of tournament preparation, um, like what we do in the lead up. You know, what's the kind of how does it work? Um, you know what? What's the best way to prep for a tournament? Kind of just to give a bit of advice um, and kind of how what works for us. So, so let's start off with you, Darren. So, as far as so, if you're going to a tournament, so take for instance Gibraltar. Um, how's your mindset? What's what's the kind of the stages that you go through in preparation for an event like that? This is interesting. So, first of all, it's for me, it's got to practice on the the missions first of all and what whatever tournament i'm going for to to pay attention to what mission set they're going for with so with no retreat they've got a, you know they've got a habit of making the the missions a lot uh, different to what normal normal mission packs are so you know they they do a combination of the um, maelstrom and the eternal war so you got you so that makes it not hard but it makes you think a lot more. So getting your mindset around that, first of all, on how your, whatever army you're going to take and how it works best, whether your army is better at doing the primary or the secondary, because that's really interesting. Um, 
yeah, for me, it's 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 play testing the hell out of it, and then just you know, I'll come up with a list, think it's really really good, then you know, feed it back to the rest of the lads and see what they think. John will come back and say, nah, that's that's rubbish. <laughs> put another list together, put it out there. Sean will come back. Yeah, that's really good. And then Sean, John will come back. Nah, that's rubbish. <laughs> um, but it, it is. It really is just practice on this one. It's just, you know, but it's yeah. for me. It's got to be practicing the missions. That's must yeah. my tournament prep. It's just practicing yeah. the missions. And and to be fair, um, go with something you enjoy playing with. Don't you know? Don't take yeah. a unit that you've not used before just because. Johnny down the road has done, you know, just won fifteen tournaments with using yeah. this new spectral warrior that's come from Tau's super HQ choice, and you think he's yeah. absolutely. Awesome. If you don't know the unit, don't take him. It's not, it's not worth taking because at the end of the day, you'll do, you'll do much better in taking an army that you're more familiar with than not familiar with. Um, so that would be my other bit of advice: just go with an army you know how to play. Nothing worse turning up to a tournament and not knowing your models, not knowing your units. Get to the end of the game and think, oh shit, he's got a five up in van, or I could have re rolled that, or I could have done that, because then you're going to be kicking yourself. At least if you've got an yeah. army that you know how it plays. You, for me, I find I've got more chance of winning with an army I know than an army I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you're good at blagging. <laughs> yes, my cat space captain has got 25 wounds and he's got a two up in van. Got to have a really good poker face for that one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, John, what's your advice, my friend? Uh, well, first of all, I think I, I absolutely agree with everything you've just said, which must be one of the first times ever, so that's a start. It's um, cool, because I am recording this as well. <laughs> so I am gonna, I'm going to play that back. And I'm actually going to make a little... Uh, yeah. Those little gif, uh, those little things you share to everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I do. I totally agree with all of that. It absolutely is spot on. I think at practice is the most important thing. Um, you know, if, even if you... So so we're talking a lot about, like, tweaking a list last minute. That's fine. Um, but make sure that you understand majority. So 90% of what your army does, what it does well, how you play it. Um, what your tactics are, how you're going to deal with certain armies um, and, and have enough kind of preparation through practice games that you're confident using it because whether you win, lose or draw, um, just feeling confident and at ease with the army that you're taking will put you in a good place. So I think that's absolutely spot on, like fantastic advice. Like, you know, don't, like if somebody says, look, I have got the most killer list ever, um, and you can borrow the models from me tomorrow, um, but you've got to get on the plane and go to this tournament. Just don't do it, because actually all you'll do is you'll feel unfulfilled by it, because one, you won't have the practice, you won't know how the army works. When you lose, you're losing with something that is quote-unquote a net list, and you won't get any enjoyment or any satisfaction out of playing it. So no. make sure that you play the army, you practice it, you're happy with how it works, um, I think that is such such a good advice. And play with something that you enjoy as well. Definitely play with something you enjoy. Um, because you won't like if you get you get a bad match up, you get bad dice, you know, you just you get to play somebody that you don't particularly enjoy playing. If at least you're playing the army that you love, that you enjoy, then you're gonna tick that box off anyway. Um, like that's just really really solid just to play with something you enjoy like you know so it's like if you take Eldar for instance like Eldar are super super solid but I have no interest in wanting to play Eldar I really don't I don't like them I just I have no interest in playing them West so I won't jump on that bandwagon but actually I love the way that Orcs play the way that they kind of their kind of fluff their style so I'll jump on that bandwagon so there's nothing wrong with like going to a powerful army and playing that army um, if you think that's going to be successful, but still play it. It's got to work for you. So it's got to be your kind of play style, your kind of army, something that you're going to enjoy. Otherwise, ultimately, you won't you won't enjoy it. I think that's 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 really really important. Um, it's also it's it's very good to work out what sort of things you're going to play. So. 
as well as your mission, so like what mission you're going to play, as Darren said, which is spot on, you know, you need to know what missions you're playing because depending on your mission will be how you build your army and how you prepare for it, but also to um, work out what you're playing against. So, you, you know, you won't be able to work out every single army and every single combination, but you will be able to work out what the what the current meta is so you know so at the moment if you're building knights you know how do i beat big 24 to 28 wound monsters which are toughness eight which have a good solid save so how am i going to deal with them how am i going to beat eldar how am i going to beat something that's really super quick super mo mobile and will have an ability to stop my um stop my stratagems um, and then how will i beat gene stealer cult because they're hot at the moment. How am I going to beat something that's going to pop up all over the place, um, that's going to be quite reliable to get into combat, and is going to be able to, to beat stuff up quite well? So you're kind of asking yourself those questions, and you might not have an answer for everything, so you might go, well, actually, if I play knights, I'm going to have a tough time. That's fine, but know that you're going to have a tough time and manage your expectations. So you might go, well, if I draw a knight, I'm probably going to lose, but you can still work out how will I get the best out of that game, how will I enjoy that game the most, and how will I be able to get the most points I can out of it, um, because that's around that managing that expectations. And that comes on to the next bit, which is around managing your expectations, and that's around if you're going to a tournament, what, what are you going to do at that tournament? So are you likely to win it? So actually, so if you're likely to win it, you're probably somebody that has played lots of tournaments and has won lots of tournaments, who always finishes near the top at tournaments, who practices all the time, who knows the meta inside and out, and knows what the best armies are. And if you don't, if you if we if you're kind of listening to that and you don't tick those boxes, you're probably unlikely to win that tournament. So don't go in thinking you're going to win that tournament. Go in thinking I want to do as well as I can. So if you set your expectations, so I want to win half my games, or I want to win almost all my games, I want to win, you know, whatever it is, if you set that expectation to a realistic level before you go into the tournament, you'll enjoy it more as well. Because if you always think, I'm going to win all my games, then you're going to come out of the tournament more often than not feeling a little bit deflated. Um, so I think managing those expectations are important. Um, so... But, but all, all above everything else, just enjoy it. Because the thing about tournaments more than anything else is they are an excuse to play five, six games of 40k when you very rarely have an opportunity to play that amount of games over a weekend and hang out with people that are generally pretty like-minded. You know, chill out, relax, enjoy a good experience of playing, of playing wargaming. Um, and you've got to think about that first and foremost, because win, lo win, lose or draw, you've got an opportunity of playing lots of games of 40k, which is ultimately what we all love, which is why we're listening to this stream, why we're doing this stream, why we're going to tournaments, because we love the game. So you've got to remember that at all times. I think that's about it. So, uh, yeah, don't. Tell us about it, Darren. Don't get disarmed if you lose, right? <laughs> Call it a draw. Yeah. So what's going on in the chat, Darren? Have we got any got any questions, got any comments in the chat? You might have to go up a bit, because there's probably been a bit.
I think he dropped out. Oh dear. Oh. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything, I promise you. Uh, so just going back through the just going through the comments. Um so yeah, you pretty much got all that, yeah, John? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, I heard it all, yeah. So yeah, I mean, all in all, yeah, uh, so put some pretty good comments there. So yeah, I mean, um, uh, what's you saying here? So what do you think will change with the new FAQ? Okay, so um, so I think one of the big things that you'll see in the FAQ is they'll go after Knights, um, and they're particularly they'll go after the Castellan. So they won't change points because they've been quite clear that they're not going to use the um, FAQs to change points, um, which is a shame. So I think what they will probably do is they will probably look at um, particularly how the Castellan has use of the um, the rotate iron shields to make it a three up invon. I think they will try yeah, and sure. stop that. So I think they'll probably maximise it out of four up, so you won't be able to get a three up on your Castellan. Um, I think there might be a few other bits and pieces they might tweak with that as well. They could potentially stop you getting access to stratagems and warlord traits unless you take a full detachment of knights. Because what people do at the moment is they'll plug and play a big Castellan into another army. Um, so you'll just have one big knight and then you use all the stratagems and all the warlord traits and all the relics on that. Doing the dirty um, and you watching. can currently get away with doing that. Um, so I think they might try and stop that. Um, but I don't think there'll be huge changes. I also think they might go after Yunari, but I think they might hold, they might hang fast for now. Um, so I think there will be some sort of some sort of codex or some sort of adjustment to how Yunari work in the future, but they might leave that for now. But I think you're definitely going to see. You get definitely going to see them come after the, the Castellan because it was so prevalent at the LVO, and they normally use the big, big events as a barometer for what they need to change and what they need to deal with. Um, and I think destroying the the Castellan and getting rid of that out of the meta is really, really good for everyone because there's a lot of units at the moment that are just totally invalidated by the Castellan. You know, you just can't take big stuff because it just kills them like that. So, um, so I think you know, for very, instance, very like the Smash Brothers. They, I mean, they're good, but actually, you can't play them not against the Castellan. Castellan just kills one a turn every time. So, um, yeah. So I think they'll go after that. I think other than that, they might they might go quite easy on this F FAQ. Um, I think things are in quite a good place at the moment. Um, would be my Yunari thoughts. Is, I don't know. Are you, Darren? What do you Yunari think? Yunari is um, friggin' horrible. Played my first proper game against Yunari the other day, and I knew they were bad. I know they got better, <laughs> but I was kind of like, I, 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 what? So you've just killed something, and now they can do what? So that unit's killed that, and now they can do what? That's that soul bursting is friggin' it's horrible absolutely brutal and yeah. i could see why i'm surprised you don't see them more in in top armies yeah yeah i think it's because they're actually there's quite a steep skill set with them so you know like to play unari really well like you have to be quite a good player um so i think that puts a few people off because on paper it doesn't look so scary it's just when you stack all the buffs and you do the soul bursts and everything it becomes quite nasty um there's a great comment in here, which I think is like a really, really good counterpoint. Um, so, um, what about all the people that have spent all their money on these models? Do you think it's unfair to remove such a big model from the meta? Um, and I think that's like a really good counter to it. Um, and I suppose the emotion being on the other side and knowing that I've got... 25,000 points of Tyranids where a huge percentage of them is totally invalidated by one model makes me feel a little bit more biased towards just mute the Castellan um, but maybe that's an extreme um, response to it and maybe there needs to be something in between it's All just really is, is just make it more 
Eve more of a fair playing field, not destroy it to the point of they've made their sales, they've made their money from it now, let's destroy it full stop and get rid of it so hardly anyone buys it. Just bring it in line with everything yeah. else and so it yeah. can still be usable in the army. But you yeah. know, you've got a valid point there. You know, There are loads of people that spent lots of money on these models um, and it would be a shame to see it completely go. Because I haven't brought one yet, but I do want one. Not for the filth side of things, <laughs> only because it needs to complete my night list off. It does, um, yeah. You know, and I need some Helverins as well in there just to finish off the, just to make that nice little unit. You know, I've got one Helverin you can take off me, Darren. Yeah, that'd be cool. You're going to give it for free. Yeah, boss. You're going to give me it? No, no chance. No chance. Oh, Wait for I... the reddies. Give me the reddies. Cool. Give you two pound fifty. Sold. Um, <laughs> so the regards with the elder and Yunari. Um, yeah. I was once told that the people that play test. I don't know if this is true or not. Said that the you need to be a very skilled player to play them. So I don't know if that is anything any truth in that. And that's why they don't get touched with the FAQs, or they they feel it's balanced. It's, it's just really, really difficult because they are basically just Eldar with a additional mechanic that means that they can, they've got some, they've got a psychic power tree and then they can activate something else each turn. So either they can you know, shoot again, move again, attack again, all that stuff. Um, and Games Workshop never want to be in a place where they completely destroy something. Um, and I think it's a real tough balancing act because Yunari have two models, basically. So their range consists of two models, which is the Incarn and the um, Uran, which is a Catwoman and then the big Avatar thing. Um, yeah. And that's basically their two models. I think they do have a little guy as well, but no one takes him. But basically those two models are like their only models. Um, and... They're kind of like, if you don't have Yunari, then those models are just kind of, they're, they're two of their fantastic, beautiful models that are kind of like almost just gone, just disappear. Um, yes. So it, it, it's difficult. They basically just need a codex um, and maybe like flushing out a little bit, adding some extra stuff, but then tone them down. I, I don't know. Um, it is, it's quite tricky, but uh, they definitely, I mean... When you when you really break it down, the thing with Yunari is you think so like every other army has to pay CPs to fight again, has to pay CPs to move again, has to pay CPs to shoot again, and all of those are not just <clears throat> like one CP, they're like two or three CPs. Yunari get it for Yunari get it for free. So what they're so what Yunari are getting is basically Yunari are getting like an additional 10 CPs, and if I said to you, right, your army, Darren's got an extra 10 CP, you'd be like, yes, please. Um, and that's that basically might. what you Or better you still, know. if you say, oh, you know, you can you can shoot all your armies, all your models again for free, Yeah, I'll take that exactly. one instead. Exactly, you know. Um, and then on top of that, they have the powers that allow them to then shoot or move or attack again as well. And, yeah. and, and they've got reliable psychers to cast that. So you kind of like you just dialing that up again. So um, but the thing yeah, is, I don't you're... actually see. I don't actually see the elder army being a hard army to you. So everyone I've seen, I'm not saying there's no skill required in it at all. That's not what I'm saying. But most people I've seen play the elder. I've seen them play it, make them look very, very easy. But especially with the bikes, the amount of shots they do, it's just just freaking bonkers. You know, yeah. Like, you, you really can't go wrong with the amount of shots. You know, toughness four, hitting on threes, uh, sh strengths, what, six normally on the weapons? Some, yeah, some of it, yeah. And then sixes do, like, yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy. You know, and Elder really strong, and I can see why people get attracted to Elder, and I can see, you know, if you there are elements to it if you do play it wrong, that, you, you know, you will get punished for playing it wrong. Um, yeah. But in general, yeah. Elder are normally... Sh you go up against Elder. As soon as I play an Elder player, my heart kind of sinks. And, oh, here we go. <sighs> you know, and I just know... But then again, I play Tau. I play John's Tau or 
David's Tower, and it's kind of like that same sinking feeling, like, <sighs> how many riptides? Uh, okay. Yeah. It's how you yeah. deal with it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what what do we think of 1750 versus 2,000 points? I, me personally, I'd go. I prefer the two thousand um, because it does let you bring more toys to the party. Um, yeah. Also, just because you've got now got two thousand points, it does mean your opponents now got two thousand points. So it means they can also bring some more dirty things to the up to the party. Um, so it's like a double double edged sword, really. On that, you either go for the for the um, seventeen fifty, but. Yeah, I'd say 2,000 points because then I can bring more models that I paid and painted to the party. And I, I, I'm always going to go for that. And for you, yeah, John, that's I, more orcs. Well, there we go. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah. I mean, I don't... We've, we've tried, so we've run two, two tournaments now at 1750, um, and I don't believe it makes a dramatic difference to timing. That's the only reason why you'd run a 1750 points rather than 2,000, which is just around how long it takes and you know anybody that's efficient with army building it just doesn't make any difference you just break through that it just stops you from bringing a like you know the toys of the that you want to play with um yeah i don't agree with 1750 personally i don't think it's the answer i'm a big advocate of um chess clocks which i know a lot of people don't like but uh for me that's how you cut down time it's not through reducing the points. And if you do go down the route of, of reducing points, you need to go much more radical and you need to take it down to 1,500 because then that will technically take the time down. But, uh, so, yeah, I would always go 2,000 points. Um, sometimes we do do 1,750 points just to try and change things up on the channel. Um, quite often it's because either, you know, one of the armies works better at 1,750 you know, it's to show what 1750 does. It's, you know, we've got a new army that's not quite up to 2,000 points yet. So there can be lots of different reasons why we do 1750, but I definitely think that on the whole, we favour 2K. Yes, um, I, you're 100% right on that. Um, but yeah, generally 2,000 points is is more of a thing. But yeah. regards to chess clocks, <clears throat> I've seen chess clocks been used in the wrong way. So for me personally, I'm not really a big fan of chess clocks. And I know you. But you've know not you played are. with them, like Darren. You've not played again, with them. Sorry. You've not played with them. I've not played with them, no. And I'd be you gutted if someone actually does pull a chess clock out on me. Um, it's very, it's very easy. It's not difficult. Like, well, actually, you, you'd struggle, mate. Slow player, central over there, but. Uh, uh, Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'm not going to get hooked on this one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think you do need Put your to try them. Away, gnome. <laughs> you, you do need to try them. Um, you need to give it a go before anybody makes an opinion on it. Um, that would be my biggest suggestion. And it's not to everybody's taste, and it's definitely not as sociable. So, you know, it does take a little bit of that kind of social contract away. But ultimately, if you really want to play competitively, and that's where your mindset goes, I would very much argue that played correctly, they are currently the best way to, to speed things up. But uh, but I definitely, I fully understand why people don't like them. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, what other questions we got there, Darren? Uh, I think it's important to put out 1750... Uh, boots that current op armies that don't need high points to win. Uh, my current genes of the cock list has 20 CP. I spend 10 before the game begins. <laughs> wow. What would you spend 10 command points? Um, so I'm guessing you're going with artifacts, putting things up against the, up, up the board. Possibly. World traits. Warlord traits, I suppose. You can buy the additional warlord traits, can't you? Uh, yes, but that's only for the Mag Magus Primus and the um, uh, yeah. Patriarch. Is it one each? Is it one CP for one each? No, it's it's it's, it's a flat for all three. Right, okay. But yeah. you can only be those three guys that 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 get it. Um, which is. 
Hmm. That's making. That's now making me think. That's making me think. Uh, don't worry, Darren. He's only taking big. He's only talking big to you because he's jealous of your high, of your height. Height. <laughs> that Batman to the right of Ace is the full size Batman. <laughs> Oh dear! <coughs> <laughs> now he's looking for Batman. I think you mean this. This is Hel Hellier. This is the uh, um, for Ragnarok. Yeah, I don't know whether that's John does My, great uh, things with the camera angles to make things look smaller. That's right. That's exactly it. That is full size generally. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you think of the Gene Steeler cult? I've got a, got a fascination have. with... So go on, carry on. No, no, go on. That's not important. Uh, so, uh, do you think Gene Steeler cult will have any effect on the Knight meta? Uh, because the Gene Steeler cult can kill knights super easily. Brackets. If Darren's not rolling. <laughs> 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 oh, oh dear. True. True. Um, that is very true. That is very true. Um, hopefully, I'm going to have some uh, dice, uh, aces lucky dice at some point. The ones that potentially just roll on sixes all the time. Yeah, I've got I've got our new twisted dice um, supply from the same supplier, so they've tri they've also been uh, blessed with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the rolling sixes. We hope. I'm looking forward to that already. That's going to be really really cool. Uh, so one command point for the warlord trait. Uh, which gives it the free CP for free relics. One CP takes special detachment. One CP for another special detachment. Warlord trait. One CP for auxiliary infiltrating Tyranid bomb. Oh, interesting. Free uh, CP. Two more units infiltrating spore bombs. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It does make sense. Um, wow, that's a lot of. Um, that's a hell of a lot of CP. Before you've even touched base on the field, that's crazy. So three relics. So what would you? And I see now you've got me thinking what relics you're taking. Um, guessing the patriarch with the can't overwatch. Hoping you're taking the one with the sniper and potentially the banner to give the better aura. I'm guessing. Um, I like the pistol. I like the pistol. Oh, the pistol. The relic guy. pistol. Yeah, the relic pistol. Oh yeah, because you can give it to um, the Keller Moth, can't you? Yeah. Mm, that's a good shout. That's a really, really good shout. Um, about 20 CP, so I'm guessing you're not taking any Imperial Guard in your detachment. You're mainly going Gene Steelers, uh, Tyranids and Gene Steeler Colt. But yeah, that's, that's friggin' mental. Good. Anyway... Time is now run out. We've it gone is. twenty minutes over. I've just only realised that we've we've flown well yeah. over the mark again. Um, yeah. But thank you very much, guys. It's been a really good show today. Uh, we've had loads of people in the comments, which is great. Which is why we do it. We really want it to be interactive. So thank you very much, everybody that's kind of chimed in with questions or suggestions. Um, that's what's made it such a good show this evening. It's down to you guys. So thank you very very much. Um, as Darren said at the beginning, we'll have another battle report that will drop this weekend. It is Sean, so look forward to it. The crazy Irish man will be back, um, no doubt, with his debt watch. Um, yeah, no, because, and if we can, guys, um, on the Twisted Dice uh, Facebook page itself, uh, in the community part, if you can put some um, pictures up on the work that you're currently working on at the moment, if you're happy to share you know, the projects you're on at the moment, hopefully next time in the next next week's chat we can go through some of the artwork or some of the work that everyone else has been going through and we can have a maybe a little discussion on what other people have been working on because I'd be really interested to see other people's work and see what other people are working on so yeah. if you can um, that'd and, be... and, and we will so next week we'll also be covering the um, Scottish takeover that I will be going up to next weekend so we'll talk more tournaments there um, I've been told by the tournament organiser that we will have lists as well so we should be able to look at other people's lists as well which will be cool so we can break them down and make some predictions and stuff like that so uh, 
So, yeah, some cool stuff to look forward to for next week as well. So, loads of exciting stuff. And Kai, definitely something to look at, mate. That's, that's awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you very much once again, and we'll catch you all again next week. Cheers, See guys. Ya. Bye for now.